OK, so usually it would make sense to derive the formula for the infinite sum of a geometric sequence by starting with a finite sum, the partial sums, and then extending. But just for fun, we're going to do this the other way round. So we're going to assume that we know the formula for the infinite sum of a geometric sequence, and then from this we're going to derive the formula for the partial sums of the first n terms. So we'll have a look at two different proofs of this, and then we'll look at generalising this for other values of r, because the infinite sum only converges when the absolute value of r is less than 1. So our first proof is probably the most straightforward way of doing this, but the second proof also involves a really nice argument that I'd like to share. So getting into our first proof, our first proof just involves writing the finite sum, so let's say we're taking the sum from k equals 0 up to n minus 1 of our sequence, we can write this as the infinite sum, so from k equals naught up to infinity of a r to the k. But then we just take away the nth term and the n plus 1th term and so on, so we take away all the terms we don't need going up to infinity. So we take away the infinite sum beginning from k equals n of a r to the k. So then we can apply our formula for the infinite sum to this first term here, we just get the familiar a over 1 minus r. Then for this sequence, I'm just going to write out the first few terms so we can see what's going on. We'll write this as a r to the n plus a r to the n plus 1, and so on. So we've started with k as n, going all the way up to infinity. But now let's take out a factor of r to the n from this term. So we've still got a over 1 minus r minus now r to the n times a plus a r plus a r squared, and so on. So you can see this is actually our original geometric sequence there. So we can have a over 1 minus r minus r to the n times, we just use the formula once again, a over 1 minus r. And then we can factorise this, take out the factor of a over 1 minus r, we end up with a into 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r, our familiar formula for the partial sums of a geometric sequence. Now for our second proof, the idea is that we're going to split up our original sequence into n different subsequences. Then we'll use the fact that the sum of all the different subsequences has got to be equal to the sum of the original sequence, from which we can get the partial sum formula to follow for a geometric sequence. So to get these subsequences, we'll actually replace our r by, let's say, x to the power of n. So then if we have a plus a times r, this would be a times x to the n plus a times r squared, this would be a times x to the 2n, and so on. We can write this a little bit more formally then as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of a times x to the n k. But of course x to the n is just r, so we can use our previous argument here. We can write this as the sum from k equals 0 up to infinity of a times r to the k. So we know from the formula that this is just going to be equal to a over 1 minus r. But then r is x to the n, so we're just substituting this in, we get a over 1 minus x to the power of n. So this isn't particularly useful on its own, but then we can apply this to all the different subsequences. So you imagine we have a times x, or let's say a times x to the power of m now, plus a times x to the n plus m, plus a times x to the 2n, plus m, and so on. So here we're getting all different subsequences for m is 1, m is 2, and so on, up to n minus 1. So let's just write this a little bit more formally. We can write this as the sum from k equals 0 up to infinity of a times x to the nk plus m. So now we can take out a factor of x to the power of m here. you see it's just x to the m times now the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of a x to the n k. So you can actually see here this is exactly the same as what we had earlier. So this sum is the same as our original sum here, which we know is a over 1 minus x to the n. So we can write this then as a multiplying by this x to the m all over 1 minus x to the power of n. And this is valid for any value of m here, but we're only really interested in this for m between 0 and n minus 1, so that we get our n subsequences. And now we're going to actually take the sum of all of these different sums along the different subsequences. 
So to write this out with our sigma notation, this will look like the sum from m equals naught up to m equals n minus 1 of the sum from k equals naught up to infinity, our infinite sum of a times x to the nk plus m. So just to convince you that this really is the sum of the entire geometric sequence with common ratio x now, we can explore what each of these terms look like. So for example, when m is naught, you'll have a plus x to the n times a plus a times x to the 2n and so on. Then the next one, when m is 1, we'll have plus a times x to the power of 1 plus a times x to the n plus 1 and so on plus a x to the 2n plus 1. And then if we keep going all the way down to the sum where m is equal to n minus 1, you'll have a times x to the n minus 1 plus a times x to the 2n minus 1 plus a times x to the 3n minus 1 and so on. So you can see that this is indeed going to be equal to the total sum of a, let's say from i equals naught to infinity, just so we're not using the same letter there. So a times x to the power of i, which we know using the formula for a infinite geometric sequence is equal to a over 1 minus x. So we've shown that the sum of all the sums along each subsequence is just a over 1 minus x. So I'll clear some board space now and then we'll be able to deduce the partial sum formula for a geometric sequence. And now we already know the value of this infinite sum inside our double summation here. So this infinite sum is just equal to this a x to the m over 1 minus x to the n. So we can rewrite the whole thing as just the partial sum up to n minus 1 of a x to the m over 1 minus x to the n. And this is all still equal to a over 1 minus x. And now you'll notice this 1 minus x to the n term doesn't actually depend on the variable we're summing over. It doesn't depend on this m. So we can actually multiply on both sides. We could take this outside of our sum, multiply on both sides by 1 minus x to the n. So we'll now recover our familiar formula, the sum from m equals naught up to n minus 1 of a x to the m. Having multiplied by this 1 minus x to the n term, we get a into 1 minus x to the n all over 1 minus x. So this is our familiar formula, just with different letters to what we had earlier. And this is valid for, if you remember that the modulus of r needed to be less than 1. So here we had r was equal to x to the n, and the modulus of r was less than 1. So the modulus of x is also going to be less than 1. So we've proven this result now in this case, and now we'll have a look at extending this to values of x or of r, which are greater than 1. So if you suppose now that the common ratio x of our geometric sequence has modulus greater than 1, we can express this partial sum in terms of the partial sum of a different geometric sequence where the modulus of the common ratio is less than 1. So if we just write this out term by term, you've got a plus a x and so on up to a x to the n minus 2 plus a x to the n minus 1. And if we take out a factor of x to the n minus 1, we're going to get a times, we'll say, 1 over x to the n minus 1, so that we still get this a term plus a times 1 over x to the n minus 2, so that when we multiply out we get a times x just to the power of 1, and so on, up to a times 1 over x, and we multiply this by x to the n minus 1, we get our a x to the n minus 2 term, and finally plus a will give us our a x to the n minus 1 term. So you can see now this is equal to x to the n minus 1 times the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of a times 1 over x to the power of k. The partial sum where here our common ratio 1 over x has modulus which is less than 1. So we can apply our previous formula here. So you can write this as x to the n minus 1 times we get a into 1 minus 1 over x all to the power of n divided by 1 minus 1 over x. So the first thing I'll do is just multiply on the top and bottom of this fraction by x to simplify this slightly. So we get, let's take this now as x to the n times a into 1 minus 1 over x to the power of n. And this is all divided by, we've multiplied by x, so you get x minus 1 in the denominator. And then if we were to expand the bracket, we take this x to the n inside, we'll get a times x to the n 
and then we just get minus 1. The x to the n cancels with the 1 over x to the power of n. So a into x to the n minus 1 over x minus 1. But then we can just rewrite this multiplying the top and bottom of our fraction by negative 1 as the familiar a times 1 minus x to the n all over 1 minus x. So then we can see that this works even if the modulus of x is greater than 1. So the only remaining case now is where the modulus of our common ratio is actually equal to 1. So you've either got the case where, let's say, first of all, our common ratio is equal to positive 1. So then you've got a times 1 to the k. So this is just summing up a n times. So this is just equal to n times a. So that's the case where our common ratio is 1. And in the case where our common ratio is negative 1, we're just going to oscillate between adding a and then subtracting a. So it's the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of a times negative 1 to the k. So if n minus 1 is even, you'll just have a. So you get a when n minus 1 is even. And you'll get 0 in the case where n minus 1 is odd. So you'll have had a, but then you subtract a, and they will all cancel out.